The following program is rated T for Teen for the use of tools and materials that can be harmful to unsupervised usage. Viewer discretion is advised. Hello everyone, Mr. Wah here from Mr. Wah Media, and yes, that is my actual name. On today's episode, techniques for painting complicated colors, white and yellow. For a lot of miniature painters out there, white and yellow are two of the trickiest colors to do just right. Now my technique's a little bit different. I like to go from dark to light, as you probably have seen in previous episodes, and these two colors are no exception. So mine is going to be a very unorthodox way, but you're going to get a nice clean look I think in the end. Now you probably can tell still by the low lighting in here, um, we don't have the HD camera, Mia's not here, so I'm using my old Samsung. I'm hoping the video and the audio is going to be nice and clean here. I've got the workstation set up as bright as I can. I'm hoping to get a nice clean look. Just bear with us, you know, um, it's a little bit tricky I think for everyone and right now, but uh, next few weeks is probably going to be me doing this solo, so just bear with us for the next little while. We're still going to try to get episodes out every uh, week or two. Well, on that note though, let's get started. All right, let's begin here. We're gonna do a primer of black acrylic paint across both of the models. That's both for the yellow and for the white. I know, we're starting with black. It's a little bit weird, it's a little unorthodox, but there's a method to my madness. Once I've let that fully dry though, I'm gonna go back in with some generic brown and do a dry brushing across the entire surface. Now, as you know, I go from dark to light, and with my brush strokes, it's a similar theory. I go a little bit heavier with my dry brush until I'm getting to basically a light dusting with the final coats. Once that's fully dried, we're gonna take one part brown and one part golden yellow to make a golden sand color. If you've seen some of my other videos, this should be a familiar formula for you all. We're just gonna dry brush that across the entire surface, make sure not to clump it. Not much more to say, just uh, Insert paint drying joke here. Brilliant. Next up, we're going to take our golden yellow color and use it by itself to do the next coat. I'm going to dry brush this lightly across the surface as I bring this demented big bird to life. Man, Sesame Street's really gone down lately. Look at this thing. Do you really want this thing to be teaching your kids the ABCs? For the next coat, we're going to take one part generic yellow to one part golden yellow. We're going to mix this together and do another dry brushing. Um, insert paint drying joke here. Insert mandatory Sesame Street joke. I, I literally have nothing else to go on right now. It's literally me just dry brushing color after color. Why are you here? Are you alone like I am? <laughs> oh God. This self-isolation is just terrible. It's only been two days. After wiping the snot from my nose and reminding myself to be a role model for all 12 of you watching this, I decided to get back to my dry brushing. This time, we're going to use some generic yellow by itself. Make sure not to get in between the wings. Can I put down day drinking as my day job? That's a thing, right? After being informed by Mia that day drinking is not really a sustainable career path right now, I decided to go back to making YouTube videos. So, where do we leave off? Oh, right, uh, take one part white, one part yellow to make this lighter color. And we're going to lightly dry brush this across the, uh, the wings here. It's going to be a very light dusting, just like in my other videos. And with that, we're done. Um... You could add some washes if you want. You could add a little bit more white to the mix if you so chose. Totally up to you at this point what you want the yellow to look like. Now here's an alternative piece for you guys. This one's from Infinity. And I used the exact same technique, just on a much larger scale, obviously. And uh, I added a little bit of Agrax Earthshade to certain parts to darken the yellow overall. Some places along the edge, I used a little bit more white in that final layer to do a bit more of a highlighting. But overall, I think this turned out pretty good, and um, yeah, I think it's a pretty clean yellow overall. 
All right, for the second piece, we're gonna do the white feathers. For this one, we're gonna take one part brown and one part white to make this lighter color and dry brush it across the surface. Obviously, we've already done the black primer and we've done the first coat of brown, so this will be technically layer number three. Now this is an interesting technique that I picked up in an old magazine many, many years ago. And the whole idea was trying to make more realistic skeletons and doing bone effects. It is also a tutorial of how to do the Deathwing Terminators from the 40k universe and how you get that nice bone armor. For the next step, we're going to take two parts white to one part brown to make an even lighter color. And again, we'll dry brush it across the wings, getting lighter and lighter with the brush strokes. Now this entire tutorial could be summed up like this. You're basically going from a brown color to a pure white. All you're doing is just keep adding white to the mix and dry brushing layer after layer. I found that about four or five is gonna do the trick, but if you wanna do more to try and have a bit more control or maybe add variance to the feathers, that's totally up to you. At this point, I'm using pretty much just pure white with a tiny drop of brown in the mix. And I'll dry brush that across the surface as usual, just getting lighter and lighter with my brush strokes. From there, I'm gonna go back in with a layer of pure white now and finish off doing the entire surface. Now, from here, I have a couple options. I could leave it as is and letting that natural shadow that we've built up over time shine through, or we could add some Agrax Earth Shade or some other wash in between the feathers to really make everything pop out. Now let's actually take a closer look at these things. So we've got our feathers, naturally, that we've been working on this whole time. But I've also worked on a couple other pieces. This one here is a necromancer from the game Conquest. And I was trying to work on the robes mostly to get that sweeping, kind of decrepit look to it. And I think it's a pretty clean look overall. And the best part is, it's not a very complicated technique to learn, and it's relatively fast to apply. Well, that has been today's episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed it. Maybe you found some useful information in there. If you did, make sure you hit the like, the share, subscribe down below, and please pass this around to all your friends. We're really trying to build this from the ground up. And we got our numbers back. So far, we're sitting at 3,000 eyeballs. Now, that means it's showing up in people's YouTube feed, their uh, Facebook notifications, and we've had 800 of those actually click. Now, we're relying on you guys for this. We can't thank you guys enough for all the... Uh, the you know, spamming <laughs> from some of the people, which is awesome. You know, we're really trying to build this channel up. And if there's anything you want me to build an upcoming episode, put it down in the comments below, and maybe we'll be able to get around to building it. On that note, I've been Mr. Waugh from Mr. Waugh Media. I hope you're thoroughly entertained. We'll catch you on the next one. Sometimes